Hey gorgeous souls and welcome back to another one of my YouTube videos. Thank you for joining me today. So today's video is the first video here in my new home which I am so excited about because my little setup's come along nicely. There's still a few bits of wall art to go up here in my office and there's tons to do around the house of course but I wanted to share with you today a little video because a lot of you have asked me of what rituals or cleansing rituals did I do when I moved into this house and did I do anything for my previous house, which is a fantastic question and I knew I wanted to document that as I left my beloved old house and moved into this house. So I really hope you are going to enjoy this video and get lots from it, especially if you are about to move home or maybe you've recently moved into a new home. But if you're new here to my channel, then welcome. My name is Emma. I'm an award-winning life coach and two times best-selling author, Law of Attraction YouTuber here on my channel. And I'm the host of the number one spirituality podcast on iTunes, Spiritual Queens Badass Podcast. And here on my channel, I cover all things manifestation, law of attraction, spirituality, and self-help. So not only do I really hope you're going to enjoy this video but the abundance of videos here on my channel over the last eight years. So let's dive into it then. So what did I do in my old house then? Well, after reading the Happy Home um, book, which was featured in Francesca's book club last year, I really love this. It's a great book all upon feng shui, the abundance of your home, how to communicate with your home. And I really, really loved it. So within there, it said, you know, if you're moving house, you know, write a letter to your home, leave it in the home. So I knew that's something I, I wanted to do. So I wrote a letter, first of all, to my previous house. And I just poured my heart out on that piece of paper, if I'm truly honest. You know, it was an extremely emotional time for me. That house has been my beloved house so much so I cried in my last YouTube video. It's been my beloved house for six years. So of course there are a lot of emotions, so much happened within that house as well. So many happy memories, so many not so happy memories as well. So I really feel like that house was such a support to me and such a guide and such a loving energy. And I just really wanted to honor and appreciate that with a letter. So I wrote my letter, poured my heart out, gave gratitude and even set intentions for the new people um, moving in. My landlord had actually decided to move in some Ukrainian refugees. So I wanted to, you know, leave some positive intentions for them of safety, of positivity, that they feel like it's their home, that that home nurtures them as much as it has me. So it was really nice to set intentions for the new tenants as well and you know, leave some positive energy there. So although I didn't cleanse that house, so to speak, I did cleanse some areas, especially my office, just because a lot happens in my office. You know, I'm doing so many workshops, videos, podcasts, you can imagine the level of, yeah, like energy and everything that's happened in my office over those six years. So I felt like the office was definitely somewhere that needed to be cleansed, especially my bedroom as well, just to reset the energy. I feel like there's maybe some key rooms that we could all cleanse within our home when we leave, just to reset the energy. So I didn't do a full home cleanse on my previous home, but I did cut the cords. So I did a visualization meditation where I connected to the energy and the elemental of my previous home and just lovingly cut the cords. And you know, it wasn't like a, cut the cords in like a negative way. It was more of just like releasing, more of just like I'm ready to go to my new home. I'm ready to connect to the energy of my new home. I don't want any cords or ties. You know, I want this house to be fully present with its new tenants. Like I don't want my energy in that home affecting them, you know? So cutting those cords was also a great thing to do just because it helps me a lot emotionally, I think as well to really detach and when I really wasn't coping emotionally with leaving that house. Um, a lot of people said like, as soon as you start moving your stuff out, like as soon as you start moving your items out and taking wall art off the walls and start packing your stuff, you know, it's not gonna feel like your home. Like you'll be able to detach a lot more. And that definitely was true. So if you are in that moving process and finding it a little bit difficult, it is true. Once you start taking things down and my friend Selena came over one of the evenings before I left and she was like, wow, like this does not feel like your home anymore. Like she was like, the energy has massively shifted. And it wasn't like negative. It was just like, 
I knew I was ready to leave. The house knew that I was ready to leave. The house not like wanted me to leave, but like, you know, the house was ready for me to leave and welcome a new energy. So it kind of just felt like, the last few days kind of just felt a bit kind of flat energy, if I'm honest, just because I think the energy of moving is quite unsettling and, you know, ungrounding as is. But it definitely felt like once I cut the cords, once I'd, you know, put my letter, hidden it away in the house, and once I'd like said my goodbyes and energetically done those rituals, it really felt like a sense of peace. And I felt like I could detach so much easier um, and also get excited about the new home as well. So that's what I did. And um, I'm gonna talk about some of the rituals that I did when I moved into that house with this house, because that makes more sense when I'm talking about what I'm doing for this house now that we're here. So one thing that I did very early on in the buying process, so before I was even in the house, um, after Callista came on my podcast, because there were a lot of blocks with this house and a lot of delays, and every time I came into the house, it felt so positive. I felt instantly grounded, instantly calm, and it just felt like a really nice feminine energy in this house. And obviously this, the um, process was not like that. It was very, the complete opposite um, and really, really stressful. So there were a lot of times I was like, I just don't think this house is for us. But every time I connected back to the house and you know, d didn't focus on the BS happening around us. Like I just felt so calm and felt so aligned and so at peace in this house. And every time we'd visited it, obviously it felt really good. So I really feel like I had to really connect back to that energy to remember why we were doing this. Remember, you know, it is a great house. We do love it. It does feel really good. The energy is really nice. So one thing Callista recommended when she came on my podcast was to do a meditation and walk up to the front door, obviously through visualization, not real life, because people were living here. And I visualized myself walking up to the house and greeting the house elementals. So in my previous house, there was like a lot of very like unicorn and gnome energy. Like it was a nice mix up in Poundbury, whereas here it's like full on fairies. Like that's it, fairies, 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 more fairies and nothing else. Um, and I was really shocked because fairies aren't an elemental that I'm particularly cool to work with. Like I haven't really worked with them before. Um, and they're also quite known to be quite mischievous as well. So I was like, oh dear God, what on earth is gonna be happening in this house? So for me, like knowing that it was full of fairy energy, felt exciting um, and it's really funny because George, my good friend George Lizos, brought me and Luna some fairy doors last year for my birthday. Um, so clearly he knew that we were gonna be needing them for this house. Um, and they're really cute because it's like Emma's fairies and Luna's gnomes, I think it is. I can't remember what's on them, but they're really cute and they're in the garden now. But um, I could just feel the, the positive and it didn't feel like, the weird fairy energy that I'd felt before when I'd worked with fairies previously. It felt like really positive. It felt like really loving, really grounded. And Callista said, once you've greeted the house elemental, no matter what it is, you know, ask whether you can go in. And the answer was no at the time, because obviously there were people in the house. Um, and I asked like what the blocks were and they were communicating that it's just timing. Like once the eclipse had passed, things would move super quick. Um, and it's just timing, it's nothing to do with us. So just like, you know, relax, surrender. Um, and that really helps because as soon as I did that meditation, I connected straight back into the energy of the home and just felt so grounded. And you know, Callista was like, ask the home what it needs. So I asked the home and you know, it said that it wanted to be loved and nurtured because it hadn't necessarily received that before. So it was great. And Calista gave me a whole ton of other tips of like ask each room what it wants to be, but I didn't necessarily go that deep with it. Um, but even just asking what the blocks were, communicating with the house elemental and, you know, connecting to the energy was such a powerful practice, which I think unblocked so much, gave me a lot of peace. And again, just helps me to connect more to the energy of the home. And of course I asked the home whether it wanted us to live here and it was a yes. So um, if it had been a no, that had been quite tricky because we were so far in the process at that time. But I think you get a vibe for it. And even the second time I came here, even before knowing about that meditation, you know, I, I stood in the bedroom, I connected to the house and I made sure it was like happy for us to be here because again, like with all the blocks and all the delays and all the things that arose, like I was like, I don't think it's meant to be. So it was just nice for me to have that, I guess, reassurance from 
you know, the house's energy as well, because I think a lot of the time when we move into houses, or even if you're watching this video and like, what on earth is Emma on about with fairies and house elementals, you know, like, connecting to your home is something we don't necessarily think about doing. We, ne you know, we kind of just move in and put our stuff in and then like, you kind of expect it to, f you kind of expect it to feel like home and you obviously want it to, you know, be your own space and feel at peace. But again, like if we're not connecting to the energy of the home and we're not setting intentions with that space and we're not, you know, respecting that space as well, um, respecting the land, respecting the space, respecting the house elementals, you know, that is where that relationship comes. And I think, you know, it's like any relationship in life, whether it's with money, whether it's with a person, you know, whatever the relationship is, even the relationship with yourself, you can't expect it to be as loving, nurturing, happy, happy, positive relationship if you haven't spent the time getting to know that person or, um, you know, spending time with it or being intentional, right? So I really loved that I got to have that experience before and build that relationship even before we were in the house because then it, I knew it was that hell yes and it made the moving process so much easier and so much more gentle, I think, as well for us. So because there had been a breakup um, happening with the sellers, Obviously, everybody had said to me, you need to cleanse that house, like do this, do that, cleanse this, do that. And obviously I was like, oh God, like what's the energy gonna be? But actually surprisingly, when we picked up the keys, I was all set to come and like sound bowl it, cleanse it, everything. And actually the energy was pretty good. Um, I didn't feel a sense of weirdness. I didn't feel like negativity. Like I actually felt really positive in the home. So whether like the home elementals were a part of that or the home just was a positive space anyway, who knows? But it was really good to walk into this space and not feel like, oh God, like the energy's really down or it feels flat. Like it actually felt really uplifting and positive. So um, who knows? Maybe they cleansed it before they left, but I doubt it. So Callista said to cleanse the space before we moved everything in but because I had underestimated the time it would take to pack up my house I had planned to come here the day before I moved in and sound bowl it cleanse it sage it everything um and it just I just didn't have time in all honesty because I was so behind on packing um and I have my parents helping me as well it took us so freaking long that I was like oh my gosh I cannot go all the way to our new home because it's half an hour away from where I lived do all of that and come back. So I didn't actually get a chance, but I knew it'd be okay. And I knew that the energy felt really positive. So I wasn't too concerned that that would be a problem. So I actually saged the date after we moved in because I wanted to like, you know, have all the removal of people's energy out. And, you know, there were a lot of deliveries and stuff. So I wanted to make sure that all of that had happened first. So then I could just cleanse everything to then not have to cleanse it again after numerous delivery people and, you know, work in the house, etc. So I waited until that had been done and I saged the house first of all, only because I had some sage left over. I don't actually buy sage anymore just because it's endangered and you know, obviously I wanna use ethical products as much as possible. So I actually purchased, and I'll put a little picture here, I purchased this sage spray off Amazon after one of my lovely followers recommended it in my um, five days to alignment and joy challenge. So I used what sage I had left over to sage the house first of all, to just remove any negative energy. And I have got a video which I'll link below where I share exactly my cleansing process, what I say, the process of what I do. So I will link that below so you can have a watch of it if you want a proper cleansing ritual to follow. Otherwise this video will be a million hours long. So I saged the house first of all and repeated obviously the mantras that I repeat. Um, and then I used the smudge spray as well just for extra effect because I felt like some areas of the house needed that. Um, and the downstairs corridor for some reason was problematic. And I don't think it was from the previous tenants. I, well, sellers, I think it was actually from like having the door wide open and having, you know, so many deliveries coming um, that just some energy crept in just because like obviously a lot of people had walked through that passageway the last few days. So the first night we slept here, I knew there was something in that corridor. Um, and Alex, my boyfriend was in the downstairs toilet right before bed and he said, did you just walk past the 
downstairs toilet. And I was like, no, I've been sat in bed this whole time reading. And he was like, no, no, no. Like you definitely walked past the, like the bathroom door. And I was like, no, I didn't. I've been sat here the whole time. And he was like, I could have sworn I heard someone walk past. And I known that there was like a feeling when I walked through that corridor, um, the downstairs hallway. And I, as soon as he said that, I was like, right, <laughs> we need to do some work. So I sound bowled it, I saged again, obviously used the smokeless sage spray as well. And then used my intention setting spray, um, which is not, it's not like a specific spray that's for intention setting. It's just a positive uplifting aura spray that I use to finish off the ritual with and set some positive intentions. Um, and you know, I gave permission for that energy to leave. It didn't feel like negative, it just felt stuck. So again, as soon as I gave it permission to leave, as soon as I cleansed it, it went and it was fine. So that's the only thing that I've kind of like felt, um, but everything else has felt pretty positive. But again, I think, you know, I expected it to feel the exact same energy as when I sage and cleanse my other home. Um, but I have to realize I'm living with people now, like my partner. So, you know, you've got other people's energy in that space. And also as well, it's a different house energy. And uh, again, I'm not used to the energy of the home yet. So I definitely want to spend some time moving forwards, like getting to know the space more, spending time with the space more, because that will naturally raise its vibration and, and build that connection and energy as well. So I didn't sound bowl the whole house, just again, those few areas and spaces that I felt it really needed it. Um, again, I just use whatever sound bowl, I've got a whole set in here. So I use whichever one felt the best and the most aligned to, you know, what I wanted to clear. Um, so Luna was absolutely loving all of that, obviously loud noises. So ultimately I sage to cleanse the space. I double saged with the spray as well. Um, and then I used, like I said, my intention setting spray to set positive intentions with the space. So inviting in positive energy, uplifting energy, angel energy, happy energy, you know, whatever I felt called cool to intention set is what I brought into with closing off that ritual. So that's how I cleansed and intention setted the space, um, so to speak. But there are a few things I haven't done yet because I've only lived here a week and a half so far. So, um, you know, I haven't been able to do everything because we've been so busy unpacking. I've had to get the office up and ready. Um, there's been a lot that we have done already, which has been exciting to like build build shelves and, um, you know, paint the kitchen tiles and do all that jazz. Um, but also as well, you know, there are some more energetic things that I really want to find the time for over the next few weeks to really settle into this energy more and, you know, finish off my ritualization with the house. So the things I've written it down so I don't forget, the things that I'm gonna do moving forwards to again, do more of what I want to do energetic wise with the house is I'm gonna write a letter to this home. I never did this in the beginning of living at my other home just because I didn't really know about this practice. So although I wrote a letter to leave my last home, I want to write a letter to this home and set some positive intentions of what we would like to experience. So I'll write that with my partner. He loves to put his input in those as well. So, you know, we'll set some positive intentions of what we want to experience in the house, what we want the energy to be, um, how we want to work with the house, how we want to like be of service to the house as well. Like what does the house need? Um, so we'll do that definitely and I'll hide that little letter away because I think it's nice to have those intentions of what you would like to experience during, you know, your time in that space. Um, I want to do a get to know it meditation. So there's a meditation in the Happy Home book where um, you connect to the house, which is the very first meditation that I did that I mentioned um, when I found out about how to connect to your house. So I want to do that for this house. Just again, although I have done a meditation, I just want to do that one in particular just to see if I get anything different. And again, now we're in the space um, to just connect to it deeper. I'm gonna continue setting intentions, like I said, whether that's through lists, whether that's through the letter, whether that's through whatever, like I'm gonna to continue to set intentions in multiple ways with the home. Um, and then I'm gonna energy grid the house. So this is what I did last time, but because this house is not on Google Maps yet, um, I've got a bit of difficulty. So I'm gonna try and find someone with a drone to take a sat like a aerial view photo of the house if we can, so I can still do this. But I might be able to use the um, land registry 
aerial road view thing they give you when you purchase the house because that is obviously like the same. So basically, and I'll put a picture here, um, on my previous house, I got a Google Maps aerial view of my house, um, which you can see here, this is my old one. And I drew a triangle around it, around my border. So obviously my house, my garden, like my kind of like border, so to speak. Um, and then wrote words around it, as you can see. So I think, again, I'm going from memory, I haven't looked at it, I think it was like love, protection, something like that. So um, for this one, I'm gonna set some different words, again, sit with my partner and we'll decide what words. But I wanna do this again because I actually really think it does work. Um, it, I don't even remember where I learned how to do this, if I'm honest, I feel like it was a random thing someone suggested years ago or something that I found randomly online one day and tried. Um, so I'm gonna do this again with this house. Um, and like, I swear, like my last house was so protected. Like the energy was so amazing. Like anybody who ever came into the house constantly said like how positive the energy was, how like protected they felt. So I definitely wanna do that here just because again, it worked so well in the last house. Why would I not do it again? So once I get my satellite view of the house in whatever way I'm doing it, uh, my maps view, that is what I'm gonna do um, when we can get that. And last but certainly not least, I want to feng shui the house. So in my last home, only in the last year, so obviously I hadn't done it in the five years prior, um, I learned all about Feng Shui from the Happy Home book again. And I, and obviously Angie Cho, who came into um, my membership and she's been on the podcast too. So I have really got into Feng Shui and I really actually feel once I found my wealth corners, once I found every corner of um, Feng Shui in my last home, it really, really enhanced the energy and enhanced what I wanted to experience in that space, whether it was have more money or whether it was to um, have more love in the home or whatever. So I really feel doing that really helped. So I absolutely want to do that again. I've got no idea where any of my Feng Shui corners are at the moment. So I'm totally guessing, but um, the energy of this home does feel fantastic. It feels really exciting. It feels really good. It feels really abundant and expansive. And I'm just so excited to work with it. So those are the things I haven't done yet that I'm going to continue to do over a period of time because there's no rush, right? Um, and I want to take my time with it. I want to do it properly. Um, and you know, a relationship is built over time, right? You can't just force all of these things in two weeks time and stress yourself out. Um, you know, I want to space it out and feel really good doing those practices. And the reason why these are so important to do, because a lot of the time you are thinking, well, what is the point of doing all these practices, Emma? Why would I cleanse my home? Like, why should I set intentions? I think just being really intentional with the space allows you to have a happy home. Ironically, with the name of that book that I've read, you know, it allows you to have so much more deeper connection, feel at peace, feel at home, you know, create your home. You know, we spend so much time in our homes, especially nowadays. A lot of us work from home. A lot of us run businesses from home. Um, no matter, you know, whether you're employed or not, we spend a heck of a lot of time in our homes. So we wanna create a positive magical container for manifestation, for abundance. And Feng Shui is a fantastic way to do that. So I'm gonna link some feng shui episodes that have appeared on my podcast as well because you are going to love them and I really highly recommend watching them but you know feng shui alone is a fantastic way to invite abundance and any emotion that you want to experience in your home but it also helps your manifestations because when you are in a space a lot of the time like 90% of the time like we are with our homes most of the time um, you know that is going to impact our energy that is going to impact our manifestations that's going to impact our level of joy that's going to impact how how we feel, right? It's gonna impact our vibration. So having a nice home to come home to or like a really nice energy to return home to or experience or work from, you know, I know that my work is the way that it is because of the space that I'm in as well as, you know, obviously it's me who turns up and does the work, of course, but I know my home also supports that work with the energy um, and with the intentions that I set with it. So for me, I wanna feel at home. I want a really grounding, beautiful space to be in. And yes, that can be achieved by decor, that can be achieved by a lot of things, but you know, having that cleansing ritual regularly just allows the home's energy to be the home's energy. There's no outside, energy impacting that. There's no sort of like people who've come through the homes energy impacting, you know, our experiences within this home. So that's why I'd say it's really important, but especially when you're moving into a new home, it's important to do that. So you can connect to the home. So it feels like home. So it feels like your space. 
um, and not somebody else's space or, you know, doesn't feel alien to you. So for me, who was moving, you know, quite a way away from home and away from my friends and family, you know, it was really important for me to feel like home here and feel safe and feel happy and feel comforted, right? So although that can be achieved through nice things in the home, obviously having good energy as well just makes it fun, makes it an enjoyable place to be. But I really hope this video has helped you and I hope it has given you some great suggestions, tips and tools on how you can let go of your previous home and welcome in abundance, joy and magic in your new home. But please let me know if there's anything I've missed. What rituals did you do to leave and move into your new home? Um, I would love to hear them because obviously if there's anything that I don't know about, I would love to try it as well. But I really want to say a big thank you to Callista for obviously her amazing house elemental meditation suggestion. Um, and obviously I'm going to read the Happy Home book again, which I'll link below because it's such a fantastic book. I'd really recommend it for Feng Shui, but I'd really recommend it for learning more about um, the energy of the home. Now it doesn't talk about home elementals in there. That's purely what Callista had taught me and my friend George. Um, so that's like, I would say really next level spirituality, but even just doing the meditation in the happy home book is so powerful. And again, I did that in my last home and it worked perfectly well. So I will link everything that I've mentioned below for you, all the videos, tools and resources, but please let me know what your biggest takeaway is and what you're going to try in your home. So thank you so much, gorgeous souls for watching. I appreciate all your views and likes. Don't forget to subscribe if you're new here because we'd love, love to see you again soon. Don't forget to leave me a comment in the comments box down below because I replied to them all. And don't forget, you can also join my free Law of Attraction support group over on Facebook where I can join myself and other like-minded souls where we talk all things Law of Attraction and spirituality. I hope you have a fabulous day, whatever you are up to, and I'll see you all in my next video, which will be on Friday. Lots of love.